Hell yeah, we're gonna hit it, boys. Let's fucking go! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, baby! Okay, I think I'm a boomer. I think I'm a zoomer. I think I'm a doomer. Damn, I'm Mike a zoomer. Ah. Uh. Okay. E double G W H I T E coming with the heat. I stay fooling with my Welcome to the Grillcast, the only podcast in the whole entire world dedicated to radical centrism. <laughs> I'm your host, Ryan. Joining me as always is Micah. What is up, buddy? What's going on, everybody? Uh, just a quick shout out to Kilo Mike, uh, who has provided me with a performance dampening uh, liqueur for tonight. Uh, many thanks for that. Many thanks to Kilo Mike. Shout out. And joining us as well today is a fresh new author on the scene. He's giving us an exclusive interview on his debut book, Incel Cyclopedia. Uh, Reginald, how are you doing today, man? I'm not doing great, you know. I'm struggling with my weight. You know, I ate 5,000 calories today, unfortunately, so I'm kind of... I, it looks like I'm a little quiet, just... I don't know. I'm just just warning you, um, but I'm kind of I'm kind of worried about my health. But um, overall, you know, I'm doing well. You know, I'm glad. I'm privileged to be on this show. So yeah, I'm I'm all right. Indeed, you are. Hey, Amen. Indeed, you are. Um, There's nothing wrong with little mass maxing. All right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, Reginald, <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit about uh, this book, Incel Cyclopedia. And the journey that has brought you here today. So there's so there's a lot of um wow, that was a very, very hefty question. Just so much to answer, but um Lay it no, off. so so about um Incel Cyclopedia, it's a book, you know, it's it's Honestly, I'm kind of self-conscious about it because um, the incel wiki uses a lot of similar talking points. So I'm hoping that, you know, my humor is enough to um, get the reader through it and distinguish it. But it's, you know, it's, it's just it's it's what I would call the black pill Bible. You know, it's kind of would you say uh, it's your life's work? It's not my life's work. It's honestly just stuff that I wrote when I was kind of frustrated. But um, you know, it's it's okay. it's like my so base we'll just, channel. We'll just say it's your life's work for now. Yeah, let's let's say it's you know when when I when I bring on my life's work part two, I will be sure to go on your podcast. But um, you know, I, I hope. Yeah, no, this is my life's work. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, Reginald, I've read over your book, and I got to say, it was a fascinating read. One that I enjoyed very much. And uh, one thing that you understand as an author, having read through it, is immediately hooking the reader. This is very important, you know? You don't want to bore people. You want to hook them right in. Get your claws in there. And the first sentence of your book, it it sure as hell hooked me. I'm going to go ahead and read that. It was, I was a skinny kid growing up, good looking, so good looking, in fact, that my first real best friend (laughs) tried to rape me in front of his (laughs) and my mother. He climbed on top of me when it was the end of one of our play dates. Uh, Could you expand on this a little (laughs) bit? (laughs) So I had this friend, right? And, you know, when I was a kid, so I was really uncomfortable with the idea um, of having a girlfriend as a kid. You know, I was kind of a bowl cell at that point in time. But, you know, bowl cells (laughs) didn't exist. Um, So I just just told everyone I was like a gay homo, you know. So um, (laughs) Wait, when you were a kid, you just told everyone you were gay? (laughs) Well, I told my parents at least. I didn't really have that many friends. My friend, I don't, know, I don't remember how much I talked about, you know, being gay to my friend. But um, you know, I just, I just remember. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he understood a little bit more about homosexuality than I did. So, um, sure. And then you know, there was there was the rape. You know, right? <laughs> okay, wait a minute. So, how old were you in uh, during eight. this debacle? I was eight years old. So you're you're eight That's years young. old and. Oof. You're telling your parents that you're gay, and then your friend tries to rape you in front of your mom and his mom? It might have been his stepmom. I think... I don't remember exactly. <laughs> he was... He, he had kind of a fucked up family, but... Um, sure. Uh, but that's neither know, here nor there. That's... I don't know. We were, we, would, we were mainly just Pokemon buddies. He described us once as Pokemon buddies, you know, when I want... Because I wanted to play fucking some me game that came out for the 3DS. I don't remember the name of it. Um, but he was like, oh, we're Pokemon buddies, but clearly we were more than Pokemon buddies. Um, so what exactly happened during this incident? Because I'm struggling to, you know... So I was not sitting, that I want to visualize. You so know? imagine this. Let me let me use some... Um, sorry, I have to burp. <clears throat> sorry, I'm... Um, you ever got a burp and you can't get it out? Um, 
anyways um, uh i drink beer all the time i have no problems burping that's okay. one i can't relate to buddy oh sorry but anyways um what happened was um okay yeah so there was like a um bed in like the room and then um this was like the fr- i i lived in like a really shitty condo at that point in time so then um there was a bed in like the um room that you would get like when you would open the door to the house right mm-hmm. um and i was sitting on it right yeah. um and um it was time for this kid to go you know because it was a school night and you know he just um he he just decided you know um they can't they can't make me go um you know they they wouldn't take a kid away from his house um and you know it was my house so if you know he was attached to me you know you know i don't know i guess i guess that's what happened but but what what was the um what was the the pre like what made him you know get on top of you what what was the honestly honestly we do some victim blaming you know in my circles you know so i can't lie you know i might have i might have been wearing something a little gay you know because you know i i don't want to sound like a me too feminist so uh yeah i do have to take some responsibility i i kind of have to wonder about the logic of that like oh they can't they can't make me leave if i try and rape this other kid <laughs> Dude, As I I'm not I'm not inside. That doesn't make Fortunately, no part of me is inside this guy's head, so um, you know, I don't really understand what he was thinking. And hopefully none of him was inside <laughs> of you. Uh, <laughs> I I want to move on a little bit. To oh, yeah, uh, another very powerful passage I'd like to relay to the audience. Um, what, what chapter? Regarding what chapter? I'm trying to I, I just wrote down the quote. Okay. It has to do with intelligence. You Ooh. say, intelligence is one of the most powerful traits one can possess. Even back in my day when we shoved dorks into lockers, it was never because they were intelligent. You never hear a bully sincerely scream, fuck you smart piece, smart piece of shit, I'm gonna kill you smarty pants. And to me, like, <laughs> you really hit the nail on the head there because this is a big problem I've had with nerds all my life. They have this idea that people are made like a character creator with stat allocation in a video game. They're like, oh, like, you know, I'm ugly and I'm weak. I, don't, I have no muscles. So my intelligence stat, it, that, it must be super high. My intelligence yeah. is high. And it's like, no, if yes. I was bullying you, it's because you were my lesser in every regard. You know, I'm like one thing I was gonna say is um, I'm six foot three, but and we'll um, get to that later. Well, I was I was just gonna say that like um, I don't you know I don't go around you know every time I see a guy with you know a girl and say hey I I deserve uh, this woman to have sexual intercourse with this woman um, you know because I'm taller than you I say I deserve to have sexual intercourse with this woman Reginald because I'm a rapist in Reginald, Minecraft. I don't- I don't, I don't mean to be an asshole here, but oh, I, I, I would be remiss if I did not point out that that is literally something that you said in your book. Of course, of course, yeah. No, I'm just I'm just goofing off, you know? Of course. Anyways, continue, Orion. <laughs> Wait, so, you know, you do write a, a lot about uh, rape. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. It's a, it's a common theme. It is course. a common theme. I kind of wanted to get... Uh, some insight into that yeah. in your mindset or not to say it. we're is against it? rape or anything <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. yeah we're not we're not we're not pro series. or anti rape you know it's... is it a big epic goof is it serious is it somewhere so in between i'll, Where I'll tell you this in? it's it's like i i obviously you know don't support rape you know i think it's horrible thing horrible thing to do but you know it's like some of the people who are against rape are just so deplorable such fucking faggots you know it makes me <laughs> it makes me you know want to support it in like certain instances that's a i got to say that's a very that's a very wing cucked kind of statement and i i'd also like to point out that you are the um host of a podcast called the rape network of course of is that course, correct yeah. that is correct yeah that's just that's just a bit you know about um so there was this guy on x um he was um he was you know talking about you know rape you know as you do as as one does on x on elon musk's twitter you know exercising their quote-unquote free speech um they were doing that right and um this woman you know the stupid fucking void said um she said what was i gonna say um oh yeah she said this guy runs a rape network so i thought you know that i thought that (laughs) phrase really clicked you know (laughs) okay that's fair i mean that's that's fair and balanced i think we can all agree on that even though you're trying to make a point i'll allow it of course yeah i do want to bring it back a little bit to the uh you know your your thoughts on intelligence and whatnot um you state in your book that 
you're in 108 IQ uh, midwit, and that's a Based. badge that you wear with honor. You look at it, you see people really deride us midwits, but we're actually better than the real intellectuals. Uh, that's you, radical you centrism about- for IQs. It is. Well, you know, you write about this anger that you feel towards stewards of intellect, such as myself and Micah, 200 (laughs) IQ giga chads. And and to quote you, you say, the weak are supposed to fear the strong. And since physically strong people like me can't completely just rape these 180 IQ faggots to death, we have to be at their mercy. (laughs) Uh, could you tell us a bit about that and your ideas? Yeah, I can. Ideas? I would love to tell you about that. So um, the problem is, right, that... Um, Whose mercy world, do you feel you're at? Um, the mercy of... Excuse me. I don't know. I, I feel like I'm at like everyone's mercy. It's really uh, scary, you know, when you feel like... It's sort of like if you get raped and you feel like <laughs> yeah. everyone around you is going to rape you, you know? Right. It's... <clears throat> Sorry, um, was interrupted. Um, let was me, somebody let me trying back. to rape you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, I've got. I, don't worry, I was wearing my um, anti uh, rape protection gear, but um, yeah, let me let me um, keep going. So, what I was going to yeah. say about this um, problem in society is that at the end of the day. Whatever is valued, um, especially if, you know, we um, only value like very few things, you know, I don't, it's like if you if you're like at the top, you know, um, I guess you're just um, yeah, you dominate everyone else. And, you know, it can be really frustrating when you are as ambitious as I am. You know, I'm obviously really ambitious. I wrote a book at the age of 18. You know, who does that? Um, so, um, yeah, I'm I'm very ambitious. And when I feel like my ambitions can't be fulfilled um because i'm retarded um you know that that can be really painful you know you know it it seems like when you when your ambitions can't be fulfilled you're like well what if i could rape this thing that was in my way (laughs) exactly i rape my way to the top i like that i like that that's good. I mean, that's one way to deal with it, right? Yeah. And I, I do have to, you know, I, I have to sympathize for you because, you know, like you said, when you're at the top, like me and Mike, uh, you know, 200 <laughs> IQ, uh, it, it it must be hard down there. Like, it, we're at the top of the mountain looking down at peons like ants. Like ants, yeah. really, looking at the... Uh, mid- Granted, our mid- show our show would be nothing without those people. Absolutely right. nothing. We would, be, <laughs> we would be destitute and failures and laughed at. You know, without without those people here supporting us, yeah. right? We do appreciate the midwits. We sure we sure do here. It means a lot. At the grill cast. <laughs> I'm glad I could help you out, buddy. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to ask you about one more line in this book, and then we'll move on. Uh, unless Mike has more. Um, and it goes like this. You say, I spend almost all my time in the online world, and this is for a reason. I haven't had an active relation. Or, excuse me, I haven't had an active real-life social life since I was around 13. What really blackpilled me on real-life friendships was when I was 13, my best friend told everyone a very embarrassing secret that I do not wish to repeat. He eventually oh, apologized, but we never it? became close again. Of course. Well, yeah, you know, it's like... You're going to bring it you to the You fucking class. tease? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I think, you know, I think um, this grilling is kind of getting out of control, to be honest. I, I might have to retract that from the book. I mean, you, you can. You think the heat's picking you... up a little bit, a little too yeah. hot in the grill? Yeah. Well, I want to ask, um, you know, you say that you haven't had an active real life social life since you're around 13. Do you think that that's contributed to the, uh, to, to the mindset that you have now? That's a really good question. Um, I don't want to answer yes or no just yet, just because I haven't really explored that topic. You know, are you, are you seeking out a, uh, active real life social life at all? Or have you well, decided that that's beyond? I would you? say, I would say I would want a real life social life, but they would have to be like, you know, they would have to understand what I'm talking about. Like me, me oh. talking about dark humor and satire and memes, you know, that would have to make sense to them. You know what I mean? And how how much of this book would you say is satire and memes? I, you know, it's hard to assign a percentage to it, but if we're going to say, because everything, because I've used would you satire say it's, as it's, like. It's, would you say it's equal parts real and satire? 
I would say everything is said with a little bit of satire, but I would say equal parts real but and the, satire the, so, for counting. So the general we're... undertones. When you when people read yeah. this book, you want you want them to understand that the the undertones, you know, looking past the jokes or whatever, is that you have a, a legitimate message and the message yes, should be clear. Yes, there's a legitimate message, but I would say that it's dangerous to read into um, things with a legitimate message without um, asking the person or without, you know, really thinking about it because oftentimes people take legitimate messages from art, you know, and, um, you know, creative works and um, they will, you know, take the wrong message, you know, like I don't want to say, I don't want people to, you know, do like illegal shit just because of my fucking jokes, you know, I just, you know, but there, there are definitely, um, you know, um, serious undertones. Yes. Um, I, I wanted to read a quote from from the book um, that you know made me somewhat curious, um, you know about about you personally. Oh yeah, <laughs> um, it's it's where you ask, um, why are you like this? Uh, in quotes, and you say, I am like this because I tried. I really tried to stay optimistic, but optimism doesn't suck your dick itself. Uh, optimism That's doesn't true. have huge tits. It won't repost your ex account when it gets suspended. Optimism isn't worth shit. Have you tried to suck your own dick, sir? <laughs> uh, um, you know, I I haven't you know given it like an honest try. You know, I've I've made gestures. You know, you were know, you not optimistic about that working? Um, <laughs> no, unfortunately, um, I don't think that would work. And and, and, and to you know, a... Micah, Micah. Yeah. <laughs> That that's rich for you because you know you're you're all in shape and fit. For us mass maxers, that's that's an <laughs> illusion. That's something that can never be achieved. Our bellies mm. get in the way. <laughs> that's thin privilege that's right that's, there, that's, being that's, able to that's... suck your own wiener. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a fair point, Orion. I'll grant you that. Can, I will. Can people actually do that? I'm gonna let yeah, you, I'm gonna let you I'm gonna let you do your own research on the okay. topic. Um, but honestly, I do want to know: are are you genuinely? Um, and this goes back to the point I was making earlier about you know what is real, what is jokes. Are you really not? Um, you know, you have you have no optimism. Are you a complete pessimist about about everything? You have no hope. You said you I were what eighteen hope. years old? Is that you said you were eighteen yeah. for real? Yeah, no, is that I'm, real? Honestly, I don't know. It's I think I wrote I write things. I write these things. You know, <clears throat> you know how they say um good time to- hard times create a strong man. Whatever that quote is, it basically yeah, that cool. with like yeah. you know good content. You know, like mm. when I'm struggling, I create like some of the best. Shit shit and i'm not saying the stuff that i make when i'm like in a good mood is bad i mean but i'm not as hungry for success when i'm like you know chilling you know well listen before we move on to anything else i just want to say like you you sh- you have all the reason here um to be optimistic you know when i was 18 year- years old i hadn't come anywhere close to creating anything nearly as profound or insightful as what oh, you have here and I appreciate it and and even you know even more than that you know like i just i just barely blossomed into into sexual activity you know there is there is plenty of hope for you sir oh thanks plenty mm. no there's there's hope for you you're a young buck you can get out there you know you can trick some dumb broad into sucking your dick of course it, it's, it's a really it's, it's kind of it's kind of stupidly easy actually now that I think about it, once you crack the code, it's kind of scary. You crack the code. Actually, it's kind of scary. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Well, you know, let's segue into the next topic. Let's remain optimistic because the nation is optimistic. Okay, on our boy Joe Biden. Joe Biden. What a guy, right? Now, normally this would be a section where I'd spend hours carefully crafting the perfect clips, backed up by original grill cast takes to, you know, compliment them and to provide you with a great listening experience. But my job was made easier today. I didn't have to do any of that for Biden's State of the Union. Uh, I, I have just one clip to share with you all from Joe Biden's historic State of the Union. And you know who made it for us was uh, good old Donald Trump himself. Oh, I think I know what clip this is. Yeah, it's good stuff. You guys ready? Yeah. Let's yeah. Go. yeah. Let's go. We're going to buy American. <laughs> We're going to buy American. Oh, some trade rules. Buy America's been the law since 1933. <laughs> Joe Biden's also, a girl. Also, what are going to affect on the 2025? Oh, it's Pinocchio! And by the way, <laughs> that law was written 
and the benefits ah, from he's a 2025. Chihuahua. New electric grid. Yeah. That is Three good. Like, like, storms and you, know, you know what would be funny fun. if they put like his Pinocchio nose under like um you know under like um a girl's butt you know because he he's like a creepy weirdo you know. <laughs> Oh, this is it's this is a, a this is Trump trying to win the suburban uh, white mom vote. Suburban yeah, and what do you think they're vote? gonna think if they see real footage of Joe Biden uh, sniffing a girl's booty hole? Uh, I think the people would probably get behind that. But I, I, I'm gonna <laughs> talk about how this happened. Here's here's what went down. Here is it. You know, Trump's bumbling around. You know, sneeding, doing whatever he does on a daily basis, and he looks at Baron. He says, "Baron, what are you doing on your game box over there?" He's on his phone, <laughs> and uh, Baron's playing around with Snapchat filters, right? And this blew Donald Trump's mind. Have you ever shown a boomer uh, Snapchat filters? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what I do they do? They know, lose it. They no lose their fucking mind. <laughs> they're like a they're like a I'm cat with a ball that. of yarn. I could... No, they have no idea <laughs> that you could craft such masterpieces of comedy with, with a simple phone. Whenever they see this stuff, like they think it's the funniest fucking thing in the world. And on that day, Donald Trump ascended. Uh, it, it's like shaking something... keys in front of a baby. Yeah, I mean, there's something filters. charming about that, isn't there? I mean, it's honestly, yeah. my grill. Like, try if you haven't seen this before, try this at home, like right now. Like int- introduce up, if you're if yeah you guys should go up you to your dad he's this. gonna be watching he's gonna be watching football drinking beer right his eyes will be glazed over maybe he's watching <laughs> Fox News you know he's just melting into he's the bre- breathing he's heavily barely, <laughs> labored breathing but then you just go up and you're like hey. You take a little video of him. What the hell are you doing, son? And then do the filter. Make him into a chihuahua. And you'll see light enter his eyes for the first time in years. They love it. <laughs> People, they love it. Uh... But, you know, Trump isn't the only one sneeding at Biden. Uh, based President Biden. His, his supporters are also none too happy with the old Biden man. Uh, they recently took to attacking his likeness. Literally terrifyingly it's like january 7th january 6th too electric boogaloo this uh the, the this horrible horrible deplorable thing that happened i i have to show you a video we and see show this? you the threats is this legal are we allowed are we allowed to show this <laughs> online <laughs> to be fair i don't think that's really joe biden like would the real sleepy joe wear a shirt saying let's go brandon probably <laughs> yeah maybe <laughs> like ironically you know, he, he, he hits maybe, an irony maybe, back. Yeah, I guess, I guess you know, I, I would hope he's, like, smart enough, you know, to know. But, um, um, yeah, Ryan, make make sure you put up a disclaimer warning before before this video, you know, goes up on our podcast. I will. I'll make sure that Please everybody make. knows the horrors that are about to unfold. Oh, my. Oh, Oh my god. So oh, not the not the whack a mole thing. So this makes the fucking guy burning from last episode look like fucking Tom and Jerry, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean the Secret Service should kill these people. Yeah, I mean unironically. These people should go to jail. <clears throat> when did it become okay in this country to pay one hundred to three hundred dollars to imitate beating an old person bludgeoning it's disgusting. an elderly uh, member of society for what for what you, you know? know and some of those people are elderly themselves yeah they they probably thought it was actually joe biden these people do not look like they're with him. <laughs> you know they thought that, that was a real guy look they they're threatening the president they're saying if you were here right now this is what i would do to you i would deliver imminent bodily harm I would do this. <laughs> These people need to be put on a list at minimum and uh, extra They need to keep Sleepy Joe out of their killed. senior centers. Wait, what? What, what was that? Sorry, I, I'm really bad about interrupting. They need to keep Sleepy Joe out of these people's senior centers. Yeah, no. These people are, uh, you know, anti-democratic. They're terrorists. This is terrorism, <laughs> you know? This is striking fear into the hearts of It's certainly, of you know what, Orion, I'll say this. It's certainly newsworthy. Yeah, yeah, it's very newsworthy. 
And you know, there, there is one thing about these boomers going up and attacking this effigy of our president. Uh, I, I know a thing, okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> or two about mixed martial arts. And these boomers have terrible form. What gym do they train at? <laughs> Who taught them to kick like that? I don't know, man. Awful. Have they never fought in their lives? If they threw a kick like that at Joe Biden... He would beat their beat their asses. He he would corner. They would bomb. go. They would go down fast and hard, <laughs> crying all the way. Crying, <laughs> crying all the way. And you know, uh, I I'm also wondering, like, what's what's the risk profile here? Like, you know, you know, some fat retard got out of his rascal to kick this effigy and got hurt, like pulled his hamstring or something. Who, who's liable here? You know. I don't know who put this event on. Where the fuck are they? What like what's the, what's the backdrop of this? Like are they outside? Are they inside? What? what? <laughs> they look like they're outside of a hotel lobby. If yeah. I ever get to the point in my old age where I'm outside of a hotel lobby trying to kick like an effigy, uh, of an effigy's ass of the president, just uh you know take me out back and shoot me. These people, <laughs> these are the kind of people that needed to be put down years ago. Their their old age has clearly gotten to them to make them think that this is acceptable behavior. Mm. There is probably yeah, still it's, more. It's, uh... it's disheartening. This is. I'm sorry you guys had to see that. Just I I think you guys should just apologize to the audience real quick. Never. I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll never <laughs> apologize to the audience. Oh, mm. I forgot to bring this up at the beginning of the show. <laughs> Big project March promo happening. time. Promo time. Yeah, everybody. it's happening. Before we move on to this next video, I just have to put that out there in case you've gotten this far into the episode. Like, what about the big project you guys were talking about for months and months? That's the only reason I tune in. (laughs) (laughs) No, it is not gone. It's still on. It's happening. It'll be dropped by the end of the month at the latest. Yeah. Most yeah. likely much sooner. Keep an Big eye out. Big project. Do we even want to tell the do we even want to tell them how much we spent on this? How much of their money everything. we spent on this? Everything. Literally everything. Every last Every. dime and cent. You guys make Sleepy Joe look like a professional accountant with your spending, am I right? Exactly. Exactly. I think with our you're spending right. of other people's money. Yes. Yeah. That's what me and Joe Biden have in common. Reckless spending of other people's money. Oh, it's a uh, we, we, it's a hallmark we, of a Chad. Well, well, our spending is not reckless. This is a worthwhile endeavor that we <laughs> just like just like all the money that we send over to um, foreign countries. No, hey, again, maybe. like I said, what we are doing has value. Yeah, that so right. does that. Are you guys are you guys chuds or something? No, well, not you at know, all. I'm not. Biden is actually. You know, he he's not really happy about this uh, influx of foreign money going out. He got caught on hot mic recently, being extremely based as usual on the topic. Hot of mic is that what they call uh, our co-host here? I think that's what they call uh, <laughs> Obama's wife. <laughs> Well, here we go. Biden on the hot mic. Let's let's check this out. I was telling the secretary, you know, I was in Jordan and uh, Israel. You can tell it's a hot mic because he's looking right at the camera. Got to keep pushing what you're doing on the humanitarian stuff and all this stuff. So I told him. Uh oh. We'll see if this is so good. We're gonna have a come to Jesus moment, <laughs> bro. Jeez. Everybody talks about how Trump is he's a heckin' base star to the deal, man. He talks tough. You wouldn't let these wars happen, you know, but. But he would never tell the king of the Jews the, the, to return to Christ. Like our boy Biden <laughs> has just done. <laughs> Repent to our Lord and Savior, you dog face pony soldier. That, that's what Joe Biden said directly to Bibi, our, our Catholic in chief. The Joe head Biden, Jew. Stumping for the Lord. What do you think about that, Reginald, as a Jewish man? I think, you know, I think I didn't provide proper context. You know, um, I think this is, um, I think this is, um, 
I'm trying to think of what opinion would be, you know, what I should express here. Acceptable? Um, everything's acceptable here, my friend. Okay, everything's acceptable. You know, I'm not going to get canceled or anything? N- n- no. You might. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Personally, I think this is making me rethink my thoughts about, you know, the, the previous video that we all called disturbing. You know, I think, you know, I think, um, yeah, I think I think Biden's <laughs> words are just unacceptable. <laughs> You think Biden has to die because he told BB to return? Hey, hey, hey! Price? I'm I'm not I'm not saying that. You know that that's not that's a little extreme. You know, but I think I think you know. I'm not maybe, saying that. Just if there's an effigy of him in front of me. Yeah, exactly, I exactly. You know, if, I'd if, rape if, it. yeah, I think I think maybe maybe some symbolism, maybe some political cartoons. You know, might um might teach him a lesson you know maybe a political cartoon of him sleeping on the cover of you know your favorite <laughs> jewish magazine you know might be might be a nice Suffice way to as punishment yeah, yeah exactly that's fair that's fair no yeah. i gotta give him credit it takes balls man it takes balls to go up to the prime minister of israel and uh Does. you know try to proselytize to him like that yeah i can't believe he said that well i'm just proud to see it but i also you know there's another part in the I kind of have a split because I do think he's based enough to do this. I mean, that's just factual. You know, he, he's our Catholic in chief. That's the kind of thing he does. But part of me also thinks that this might have been a stage top mic moment, right? Mm-hmm. Like the, the leftoids are spurging about Palestine. Even Setting even themselves on fire. Point, setting themselves on fire. And even normies at this point are like, I don't know, man. I don't think Israel should be killing d- civilians indiscriminately like a bunch of cucks, you know? And this was his way of appealing to them while not actually doing anything that's my Maybe. conspiracy theory yeah it does kind of sound like I, a, I have another a conspiracy, conspiracy theory, theory. Let's, okay let's hear it honest. buddy i think you know personally i think um i think the 2024 election was already stolen from uh nikki haley you know i think putin <laughs> with the GOP primaries. Uh, um guys ra- raise your hand if you would uh rkd for nikki haley you can't see but i'm 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 str- i'm straining right now Okay. Get my okay. hand up in the air. <laughs> Micah, do you know what RKD means? <laughs> I mean, would it matter if I did? Those are those are th- no, they're it three would, they're three it of the most matter. extreme actions you can commit, let's just say that. Because I agree. I agree for <laughs> Nikki Haley. Who, it was stolen from her. Let's be honest here. She was a perfect candidate, all right? Very likable. Everybody for my liked stock her. Portfolio. her smile lit up a room. For my- <laughs> okay. And for her to be st- to be robbed. Who's the who's the Hindu who's the Hindu prophet us. again? Vivek. Uh Vivek. No, I, Vivek. I mean like like the Hindu is Buddha. Buddha is not Hindu, obviously. So who who's the Hindu prophet? Oh oh, like oh literally. Oh jeez, man, um, what is this yeah. trivia night? I should know this. The fucking elephant thing. I don't I don't know. No, the, I, I was gonna I was gonna do like satire of like um how man. Joe Biden tried to like push his religion on, you know, Jews, you know. I was gonna say like Nikki Haley was gonna do that, you know, ha ha ha, you know. Oh, that's a terrible joke. Why would you do that? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Where's Orion? He's here. He's just he was just gotten out a little bit. We were just filling in the filling in the blank oh. space. Oh. Um so he he can still hear us. Okay. Krishna? Is that it? I don't, I don't know. fucking know, I, dude. Yeah. Well, it's unfortunate that terrible joke is going in the episode. It is. It is. Oopsie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the recording failed a little bit. You know, unfortunately, these things do happen. So we'll pick it up here. Hey, Orion, uh, talking. Can I, can I just do something really nice for you? I just want to say, um, if you need, I'm actually, I actually work for Verizon. You know, so I can, <laughs> you know, if you give me your address, you know, I will, uh, I can, you know, go to your house and like not rape you, you know, and um, <laughs> you know, install some internet, you know. So uh, yeah, mm-hmm. just just give me a call. It's very generous buddy. of you. That sounds like a generous offer that I'll definitely uh, take up. Yeah. Oh, thanks. I'm getting right on that. Here, let me uh, just type that there. All right. Verizon yeah, come on the way. rape service. <laughs> <laughs> At home rape delivery. Can you feel me yet? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you know, where were we even? Fuck. I was well, chewing Let's just loudly. start up with the... Oh. Yeah, let's just start up with the next segment. You're chewing loudly, obnoxiously. Uh, but there is a guy. All right. There, there's a hero. Uh, our story starts in the nation of Haiti, 
You may have heard of it. A beautiful, world-class development. Not a shithole. One of the best. Not a shithole. And you might not believe it, but Haiti is having a little bit of civil unrest right now. That's unbelievable. I know. I know. When I heard this news, I was like, what? My eyes popped out of my head like six feet. Guys, you know, it was- this is just... I'm just I, I like imagine if America were this like like do do people eat do people uh grill eat, you know I you know wait I just realized something this is the grill cast and we're talking about Haiti like what's going on in Haiti isn't that isn't that convenient hey 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 oh, I'm you sorry. wait your turn <laughs> <laughs> you're so sorry. mean to our guests Mike <laughs> holy shit well you know. That is the thing, though. I'm glad that you brought that up. You know, I appreciate your contributions, <laughs> oh, unlike thanks. some co-hosts, pieces <laughs> of shit, because a uh, top Haitian gang leader, he, he's called upon their prime minister to resign. Uh, you know, he used his based grilisha to take over the capital and their, you know, to oust their wingcuck prime minister, to keep him from returning from his shady over- overseas Epstein Island trips that I assume he was on. And the name of this man, the name of this man is Barbecue. Yes. And and what many people don't um, know, actually, is a little known fact, is that uh, his group is actually a splinter cell off of our own Grilisha. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, we so are affiliated. That's proud, so that's if, proud so if the Haiti. grill cast controls Haiti, you guys could, like, rename your show to, like, hate speech, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hate speech. Yeah. That... That that'll be our speech, uh, Haitian yeah. division of yeah. the grill cast. Hate mm-hmm. speech. I, I I do want to play a clip of our hero barbecue, so you can all witness his glory, his magnificence for yourself. So once you see this man and the facts and logic that he's dispensing, <laughs> facts. And all right, you're going to be very happy. So here we go. Despite being under UN sanctions for human rights abuses, Jimmy Cherizier is currently one of the most powerful men in Haiti. On Tuesday, the gang leader, who also goes by the name Barbecue, made an ominous threat against the Haitian Prime Minister. If Ariel Henry doesn't resign, if the international community continues to support him, we'll be heading straight for a civil war that will lead to genocide. (laughs) <laughs> and see, that's what's him? so nice about these third world nations you know here whenever we go and commit genocides we do it all the time you know it, w- we have all these weird propaganda psyops to convince you oh we're just de- defending democracy but this guy he's straight to the point he's straight up about it he says look billions must die okay <laughs> <laughs> we're going to commit a genocide if you don't get the out caribbean of caribbean is fallen I, the Caribbean has fallen. This is a guy who's straight up. You know, he says it how it is. And I like that, you know? No, I really this guy's I like, really this guy's like Donald Trump if you know instead <laughs> it this is like this is like orange is the new black, you know, only black <laughs> is the new orange, you know. Yeah. No, you're well right. Said. I mean this this guy, he, he just looks based too. He's kitted up in his like flailing his little legs his around feet, like a gay homo. Yeah, like- <laughs> I mean, based warlord. Yeah. He, he's got those clean black Nike Juke. Air Force sneakers. Those are clean. And those are legitimate, too. Those aren't even knockoffs. This is what a real leader looks like. How come none of our leaders wear clean black Nike Air Force sneakers? You Probably know? Probably because they can't afford them. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Dude, he's literally. This guy he's, knows. He, that's that's oh, another comparison to Trump. You know, how, how they both like their uh, shoes, you know? Well, that's the thing, though, is that Trump talks a lot of smack, but he's not, you know, he'll go around saying things, but he doesn't really mean them. This guy says it with his chest out. This is the kind of leadership we need in this world, you know? It, no, he doesn't you. have uh, yeah. he doesn't have secret service protection. It's he has easy. a rifle of his own. It's easy to cry about journalists, you know? It's hard to state that you're going to commit mass genocide, you know? Right. And so, you know, it's not just us based gorillas who support this man, not just us from around the globe uh, saying that this guy who's going <laughs> to murder millions of Haitians probably is cool because his name is Barbecue. I also, I want to know. Also, I'm sorry, just before we go for genocide against who? Uh, anyone in his way, I would <laughs> assume. <laughs> I don't see how this is different than like um, not to question like normal, his understanding like, of the word, but 
I don't know. I, I don't really see how this is different from like a normal like um you know you know I'm not I'm not going to say anything racist here but you know I don't see how this is different from Thank like God. you know a city in America you know True. Well, you know, I think the difference is that this man is uh he shows promise, you know. He doesn't just want regional control. He doesn't just want to control the block and run off other drug dealers. He wants to control the nation. He wants to say, "Look, leader who's getting UN support or whatever, who's going out there doing all this cringe stuff. We don't like you. And you're not allowed he's, to come home." He's I, kind of a visionary. I, he's a visionary. He's kind, of, he's kind of like a Grand Theft Auto level like gang leader. Yeah. You know, the ones that have like cartoon villain ambitions. And I respect that because yeah. it's cool. And you know, it, it, it could end up being funny. <laughs> and his and name's more importantly, barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> the most important thing. But we're not the only ones who support him uh in his quest for blood. There's also the civilians, the people in the streets of Haiti. You might wonder what they're thinking. You know, they might you might think they're scared that they're uh trying to avoid imminent death, but they actually support him on his campaign because this is a campaign for the prime ministry. That's what this is. This is how they do this here in Haiti. Uh, so let's listen to one of his supporters. According to the UN, at least 15,000 residents have recently fled the worst hit areas of the capital. This man is one of them. These men had warned us that they were going to start fires. They made good on their threats. They said they were going to invade the penitentiary. They did. They said they were going to burn down this police station, and they did. They're showing that the police don't matter. Promises made. Promises made, promises kept. God, I wish that was me. Like, look at this guy. Look at this guy. His impassioned speech. Uh, out there trying to win the hearts and minds and souls of the constituents of Haiti. Barbecue's out there making promises. He's not just walking the walk or talking the talk. He's not just talking the talk. He's walking the walk. This man... And, and this man's impassioned speech in support of barbecue to me. Where do I go to donate? That even though he's black and I'm white, we can agree on this. Where Where do I go to donate? Where can we all go to donate right now? Where can, <laughs> Where can I go to donate our Gumroad subscribers' money right now? I know that's what I'm wondering too. How do we support this man material? How do we get him even sicker Air Force Ones? <laughs> How? <laughs> Reginald. A question that's burning sorry, sorry, in the was, mind of all of us. I, I, I can't, today. I can't, you know, I'm, you know, normally I'm a solutions guy, but, um, I, I, I'm going to be honest, I do research on this. You know, I've, I've, I sort of, you know, try and avoid, um, you know, I just knew that there was like videos of like people eating each other, you know, in Haiti, you know, it's so, like, I'm, I'm not an expert on this topic. Cause you know, I try and avoid, you know, nasty stuff like that, but you know, this, this turned out to be a pretty keck situation. Right. Are, are they really eating each other? Is that a thing? Appa apparently, according to X, they've moved on. They've moved up. Why from do you mud. think they call him barbecue? They've <laughs> See, literally they, they... grilling his enemies. How based is that? What a win for centrist chads today that we have this man, this thought leader emerging before our very eyes. Guys, would, would guys? I thought it I mean, was a really good joke um, or a really good bit. You know, what if like his Haiti followers, you know, became like MAGA of you know only they were black, you know, and they started barbecue and on, you know, <laughs> <laughs> barbecue and <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> Where we grill, when uh, we grill all. Damn, that was good. <laughs> Sorry, I, I get nervous, so I fuck up my delivery. No, you know, no, and no, I'm, was... I'm on a podcast. No, that was great. That was a that was a good joke. You got to oh, stop thanks. being so nervous. Get, oh, sorry. get some confidence, buddy, because you're you're a funny kid. Oh, all right? thanks, man. I I don't like you uh, denigrating yourself. Oh, buddy. I appreciate that. Yeah, we won't allow. But that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we can. We can all get behind this guy, Barbecue, and his meteoric rise to the top. But, you know, who we can't get behind, in contrast to the uh, last segment that we did, is Nikki Haley. Oh, I could get behind her if you know what I mean. <laughs> okay. Like rape? Uh, no, uh, consensually, of course. Uh, okay, cool. It, she would do it, too. She tried to fuck one of the guys who wanted to vote for Trump, if you uh, remember that. Oh, yeah, I remember. Show, but... I don't I don't remember her, like, go. I, I think she ironically entertained it, but the guy got, like, kicked out or something. Yeah. Oh, uh, she got his number on the way out, though. She had, oh, yeah, <laughs> she had the bouncer be like, hey, leave your card. 
Wait, oh, yeah, I remember this. I remember Even the way she said, like, this. get out of here was kind of, like, flirtatious. Yeah, yeah. Like, Playing hard to get, <laughs> as, as these women do. But, uh, yeah, Nikki Haley, you know, recently blown the fuck out. Super Tuesday came and went. <laughs> and, <laughs> well, I guess not recently that recently. But recently, up. recently enough, we're on Grillcast time here, buddy. Okay? Super Tuesday came. Came and went. Nikki Haley, blown out. Many so experts and political thought leaders, you know, they see the situation and they've been left scratching their heads, wondering how could she have lost Nikki Haley? The perfect, <laughs> trustworthy, captures all the issues that Americans care about candidate. Nikki Haley. Yeah, I mean, when I, when I look at Nikki, I see up. myself. And it just when like, I look yeah, at I Nikki, see... um, something happens. Right. When I look at Nikki Haley, I see myself she, she in evokes... her fallout ghoul face and dead, blank, angry eyes. She she evokes powerful feelings. Right. And so, you know, these people are wondering, how did she not catch on? How is she not our president? How is she not even a candidate? Okay. But a Texas woman, extraordinarily, you know, of all people, a woman, succinctly captured exactly what happened, exactly why she failed. And I think her wise words are powerful and worth listening to. So let's check those out. NBC just reported that Michelle Obama has said she will not run for president. Thank God. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Ainsley said, I would love the reaction from from a woman in the crowd. And, and I wouldn't vote for a woman. And especially, you know, Nikki Haley, I'm just going to say this. She's probably menopausal. We don't need that. <laughs> hey, said, how about we vote for people regardless of their gender, just the right person for the job for America. Yeah. Shut up, yeah, cuck. Kind of, so much, well, <laughs> kind of interesting I would have lost my shit, dude. If I was that reporter, <laughs> oh my God, dude. I, I would not have been able to contain myself. Well, you know, she has such a good point there. It, it, we will that was never a very, have that a was a real that was a real woman moment. <laughs> that was a real woman moment. A woman hating another woman? I don't believe it. <laughs> How could this happen? Look, we'll we'll never have a female president because of what she just stated there. Because there is a kernel of truth. I mean, can you really trust someone who has wild hormonal fluctuations <laughs> with the highest power in the world? Who is for like four or five days a week can't even talk to her husband because she's so pissed off at fucking nothing. That's well, someone that you want to have on the uh, nuclear we could, we button. Could, you could circumvent the issue by um, that woman chemically castrating themselves. That would be helpful. That would be helpful. But they won't do it. I, you have to look at this idea, you know, having a woman there with her feeble woman mind and her hormonal fluctuations. How how could she possibly fulfill the requests of her highest donors while bleeding out like a stuck pig? It's a good question. That just seems impossible <laughs> to me. No, I don't. I don't think we're going to get an answer to that question. I don't think there's anyone. Um, I don't think there's anyone who could provide it in the mainstream media or, or elsewhere. Well, the thing is, too, is that we've seen what happens when she's all whacked out from her hormones. Like, I don't know if you remember watching the debates, but you I, could I tell did not which watch a single one. Well, if you had, you could tell which debates that she was all hormonally whacked out at. Mm -hmm. Like some of them she would do better. Some of them she would just get super pissed. And so Vivek you're... could smell it. Yeah, it's like the <laughs> Indian magic where you could like smell the blood coming out. You'd hit her harder then. You know what I mean? Like you just can't trust that. So are you saying what she, if perform 9 she performed okay. better? No. No, she didn't. She got all scrambled and she got all upset she stopped thinking clearly i see uh okay. imagine this situation it's 9 11 2001 and we're in a bizarro universe where we have a woman as a president and she's a she's at the peak of her period you know having a hard time bleeding out eating ice cream on the couch because it makes her feel better and then the first tower gets hit mm -hmm. where would we be today if that had happened I think millions I think of something. innocent people could have died afterwards. I think I think this would I think what would have happened would have made like what's going on, you know, in Gaza today, you know, look like, you know, look like nothing, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the catastrophe we avoided in my hypothetical scenario, which would have never happened because we had sense back in the 2000s. I mean, my God, I mean, would there be so many Just deaths imagine. on the Gaza Strip if there weren't women in the IDF? <laughs> I don't think so. 
just having a bad day all bloated and shit just like uh, my boyfriend thinks i'm ugly you see a little <laughs> you annoying see, palestinian you child something. and you're like <laughs> yeah get out of my face Pew. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's be honest here. That's probably why the death toll is so high over there. That's a very cogent point. Thank you for bringing that up, Micah. Yeah, no problem. I, I, I think do my research. Giving women like too much credit, to be honest. Like you know, because like, can can women even like you know shoot guns? You know. Yes. Have like, you ever heard of a, Have you ever heard of a life insurance claim? Yeah, but like, don't <laughs> do, doesn't like shooting a gun. Like, don't don't women like grow a penis when they like shoot a gun? You know, or something. No, that's a myth that your your parents tell you when oh, you're a sorry. little kid, you know, to keep sorry. you from uh, uh, doing stuff. Oh, yeah, of course. It's one of those early childhood fables. But, uh, you know, to close it's out, possible. we'll close out the, the show here with one final clip, an uplifting clip. Uh, now, you know, Nikki Haley, loser, lost. Out of the out of the field, no longer relevant. But that. is his final question the JQ? Is his final question the JQ? I don't think so. That would be so based. Definitely Whoa. not. Whoa. Okay. Uh, you know, to close out, you know, Nikki Haley, maybe a loser, delegated to the dustbin of history, gone, not Blown missed. Out. But our boy Joe Manchin has uh, firmly planted himself as a centrist Chad once again. Unsurprisingly, as if, was, as if it was ever in doubt. Right. Guys, can I be honest never... here? Is honesty allowed on this podcast? Yes. Okay, I maybe. don't know who Joe Manchin is because I don't like follow politics. Well, get ready to have your mind blown. Dude. Yeah, because this is huge. This is huge. You're going to you're, you're gonna watch this and you're going to be like, oh, so this is why I'm a centrist. That's the thing about centrist chads is we don't just walk. We don't just talk the talk. We walk the walk. We constantly reaffirm ourselves as alpha males, sigma males even, you know, these these high ranks that we hold, they're deserved. They're earned. OK, so, uh, yeah, let's. Let's check that out. Let's see what our boy Joe Manchin is up to. You sick fuck. How dare you? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna ask what was the context of that clip? I, I, I don't get it. So let me let me set this up a little bit. Joe Manchin, you know, he's having a powwow with the people, as he does, you know. This is a man of the people. He's not afraid to go and sit down and talk and he's a let you know why he's the best, why he deserves his esteemed rank. So he's there, he's talking with the people, and some leftoid faggot comes up and he says, Oh, oh you're, you're sick, oh, you're, you're a bad guy, oh. And then Joe Manchin, what does he do? He stands up, he squares up, he's ready to fucking go at a drop of What'd a hat. What'd you say to me, boy? What'd you say to me, boy? You could see it. You could see it in his body language. It wasn't just a for show thing. It, it was entirely. He wanted to kill this wingcock. He wanted to murder him with his. It's a natural. Cold, it's a natural. With instinct. his bare hands. It's a natural. Instinct it is for any radical centrist leader. It is, and he gets up there. You know, he squares up, and then his boy. You know who he pays? He pays this guy to rough wingcocks up for him. He doesn't have to get his hands dirty anymore. Yeah. But he wanted it. He wanted it so badly. You could see it in his eyes. His whole soul yearned to kill this stupid faggot. It's all he wanted. And then his, his security guard just dummies the kid. Just totally dummies him, throws him out the door. I mean, good thing that kid couldn't get brain damage. He's too stupid to, uh, you know, have lost anything. Because uh, I think he fell straight on his head after that epic push. What I, I just think of that guard. concept isn't isn't it? Aren't we fortunate that uh, President Joe Biden is also too stupid to get brain damage? Um, so you know nobody was harmed in the making of those uh, disturbing videos. Which videos? You, you know the disturbing uh, videos with the fucking dummy or whatever. Oh, oh, right, right. You know that that dummy, you know, might have gotten brain damage because it was probably smarter than Joe Biden. But um, you know, they, they, you know, if if you're going for the head, you know, you're not really threatening anyone. You know, I am I, a, I am now fully disavowing the incel cyclopedia after oh, yeah, that, that was <laughs> heinous attack on Joe Biden. <laughs> for you to have said this about just, our king, like my you, you know, 
you know that this wing cuck was just utterly brainless. I mean, it goes without saying, but I'll say it anyways. Just like, what do you think you're going to get out of out of like checking Joe Manchin? Like, what the what the fuck do you think you're gonna achieve by doing this? Like, well, the leftoids they've done this thing with uh, with Joe Manchin with uh, Kirsten Cinema Cinema. You know, rest in peace. Uh, she's she's rest leaving the political game. Rest in power, you. queen. Yeah. Where they say, you know, what's wrong with the world is that these people say they're Democrats, but they're actually common they sense. They don't do what I want. IQs. They don't do what I want. They don't bow to my whims, my ever-changing whims that are dictated by an algorithm. They don't bend <laughs> to that. So I am incensed. I am incensed, <laughs> and I'm going to go prove a point by going up and getting mogged by him and then thrown out the door like a pile yeah, of garbage. I'm going to go cry on camera. <laughs> yeah. That that's that's literally like the peak of these people. This is how thoughts. we change the these world. These cucks. <laughs> these wing cucks are sick people, Micah. They're sick in the head. This is the height of their ability. This is the oh, best they can do oh, other than light themselves on fire. <laughs> it's amazing. Which is the preferable alternative to this. Right. If you're if thinking gone about there, accosting Joe Manchin, just please just light <laughs> yourself, on, yourself fire on fire <laughs> in front of his office. I'm sure he would appreciate that much more. Dude, if he had done that, if he had just gone in there and said, Joe Manchin, you're <laughs> evil, and then lit himself on fire, I bet Joe Manchin would have just stood and watched as he burned, <laughs> just staring him in the eyes the whole time, absorbing his soul. No. Well, we know he would have, he probably would have said, uh, cringe. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Gay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Thanks, all right. Guys. Well, that's, that's uh, all we got here today on the Grillcast, the only podcast in the world dedicated to radical centrism. Reginald, thank Reginald. you for appearing with Thanks us. Thanks for having uh, me. I appreciate it. Of course, would you, man. Would you like to shill your, your crap? Uh, I don't know. Just just check the description. I'll, I'll message you guys later with you know whatever I think. No, is the most no, important. no, 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 no. Show your stuff. Okay. Well, um, the book will be linked in the description. Um, I'm not I'm not exactly sure where it's going to be published yet, but um, Amazon, of course. Amazon, yeah, of course. Um, but that's limited time, you know, because it might get taken down. <laughs> limited but, time. Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah. So yeah. I wanted to talk to you about that because you were telling me you had these plans to list it on Amazon. Uh, I'm pretty sure that they have like AI scrape through it and the repeated oh, use of nah. the N word might. <laughs> I mean, it's not a okay. very Tom Sawyerly way of using the N word. It's very pointed. <laughs> I've been told the worst stuff is on there. You know, like you know, there there's some pretty right wing chud books. Yeah, on there's there, stuff. But, there's, there's fucked up stuff on Amazon. But yeah, no, I'll I'll find a, I'll find a safe home for it. You know, um, yeah, just, just yeah, I'll, I'll tell. We them to, we will make sure that it reaches the masses. I appreciate that. We will shill it to our thousand of subscriber. <laughs> On this, the Grillcast. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you for coming on today. And with that, peace out, my grill. Everything yeah. cooler long as I'm not Laura Luma. If you think I'm not number one, I just spell that rumor. Hit that victory boy, yeah, along some motherfucking coochie. Default dance on a bitch. Micah, you're banned <laughs> from drinking on shows from now on. Floss dance while I'm flossing in a whip. Just sitting there victory eating boy, fucking yeah, chips. You know what a nightmare hit. that's gonna be so for me to edit out? No you piece of shit. Really <laughs> how I, the guest, was not offered a snack. <laughs> yeah, that too. You didn't even offer any to the guest. What the fuck, man? Oh, I'm sorry. I need guys. it more than you do. <laughs>